guess the email didn't get sent out that we were presenting today. Uh, oh, I'm <laughs> um, actually, as you see, we got um, a, we got an all expenses paid to Canasta, which was amazing. They also gave us these swanky polos. <laughs> oh, yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah, so we had to answer the question about from Professor Inchard on teaching science more like it's practice. So we all got together, collaborated our 800 words, and um, I'm not sure if anyone else actually submitted, but we sort of won the um, the money to pay for us to a go to the conference for three days and accommodation and food. So. Um, the best thing about oh, is this, is this yeah. 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 Press play. Press play the background. Uh, I think the, the you guys keep talking. Canasta pro, um, program this year was superheroes of science. So if you've seen all the superheroes around the photos, you'll... there's lots of people in cake. Basically, the <laughs> slogan. Okay, the slogan was um, superheroes are mastery. Not only as a teacher, but as a student. You know, a lot of students, we need to sort of spark that curiosity back into them through things like STEM and things like that. And that's what we put in our response to Professor Ian Chubb's question. But during the conference, we had, we went to a lot of workshops, um, keynote speakers. We were lucky enough to listen to <coughs> Professor Alan Pinkle, who's the new Australian Chief Scientist, which was great <coughs> and inspiring. And the workshops were great, and I'll let some of the guys talk about their favourite workshops, otherwise I'm going to talk for the entire five minutes. Um, so I attended a marine science workshop. Sorry. And uh, basically, he was just talking about how, what he, he's, um, I forget his name, I think it's card somewhere, but he was from Perth, and um, what he would do is he'd uh, fast track his syllabus so that they'd have a whole term to do a, like a massive EEI. And uh, the one he did was using a like an electromagnetic pyramid to grow a like a faux coral, a uh, faux um, reef, and yeah, so he'd go and get all the kids, they'll prepare it all together, and then he'd go out and drop them out in God knows where, some some area that he had to get permission from the Queensland government to actually drop them out there because it was so remote, and then he would go out, get the results, come back in, and then the students would actually tabulate the results and analyse the results. It was really, really cool. He did a couple more. He did one with the uh, dolphins and how dolphins interact. And so they attach sonar to their legs and uh, would listen to the dolphins interacting with each other while they're... Yeah, the humans are standing the world. Oh, the humans. Oh, yeah. So they, yeah. Obviously yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so not the dolphins' legs. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, then that was at Monkey Mike. So that was uh, really cool. Um, the last one was uh, about dorsal fins, so how um, when the dorsal fins are damaged, how it creates drag and it slows down their speed. So, for example, he was looking at one dolphin who um, his dorsal fin had been completely cut that way and the top of it was completely flapping out and so technical, I know, but I apologise. Um, but it, the drag was so much that it couldn't catch food and it ended up dying, but not so much from anything other than starvation. So these were all things that actually you could, as a senior teacher, use for things like EEIs and things like that. So it was demonstrating the potential of experiments. He, they, at his school, his school's pretty, pretty good for, like, from what, in my opinion, they actually have like 3D printers and like, well, there's like a water tube thing that, and they put dye in it to make it, to mimic the drag. And they actually printed off little dolphins with like, the one with the normal fin and then one with a fin like, I forget the dolphin's name, but they had a name for him, but, yeah, it was really cool. And actually, I was actually surprised I had a three D printer at there. Um, school. Um, so my favorite thing that I went to was um, uh, like a a thing run by Wasp. So basically, they're a um, like an organization that does lots of. Um, it was basically based around geology, so they do like all of your like. Geology stuff from grade seven to twelve. The PowerPoint stuff. Um, yeah, so it was just really good for resources. Everything that you went to, lots of people gave you lots of stuff. So I find that like it was really really helpful for now. Um, I just walked into my leading day last week, and um, somebody uh, 
that I was there with was like, you have to teach a bunch of agricultural science. Um, so I went to um, like one of the presentations that was on GMO. Um, and basically I had the whole, like my whole seven weeks that I'm gonna teach from that. It's just, it was really, really, really good for resources and just getting experiment ideas. Um, Wasp was my favorite one that I went to because we got to eat during it. Um, she did lots of like um, like slips and fault lines and stuff with lollies and you got to do like the whole Tim Tam thing where you drink the milk and stuff through that, so that was really cool. Um, but it just gave you lots of ideas for stuff you can do with the students. So I never had to buy a USB again, they gave me oh, yeah. USBs. Mm -hmm. like, you walk past and go, take the USB and they'd like throw it at you. It was just ridiculous how many would make it. We had a bit of a competition on who could actually obtain the most um, merchandise stuff. as you're walking around the stands. All of the USBs had resources and things like that. We made contact. Everyone made fun of me, but I had networking business cards. And we had a, we actually had a, com a competition as, as to how many I could hand out. But for you guys as well, it's like $27 from Vistaprint to get a networking card, which has just got your details and you know put your face on it. So if you go to the teaching fair or things like that to hand these out, is actually a really good thing. People will remember you from that. So it's, it's worthwhile doing. Yeah, they all remembered her, which was good. Yeah. But it was it was really good the networking there. Like we'd all go into this auditorium, did everyone see everyone just got this kind of fast motion, everyone was running around and that everyone would go in here to have lunch and you'd basically network with people from all like teachers all over. We'd we even got <laughs> Oh there's that and um which and also other than that we would you could then go to the workshop which was the more serious side of the canasta and you'd actually learn a lot. In these workshops, I, I yeah personally, my, the marine one spoke to me. That wasp one was perfect. There was heaps of things that I wouldn't even think of, like heaps of experiments I wouldn't even have thought of that were there. Like, um, well, he was saying the Mars bar with the fault, like so you can see how the fault lines move. And she's like, oh, you, you know, use the Mars bar to do it, and it was really cool. They also fed you their donuts with syringes of jam in them. Yeah, so um, I think just going on from what Brian said. Um, although it was great to see all these um, activities um, and integrated lessons and whatnot, one of my favourite workshops was actually completely different and it was talking about how to connect with scientists out in the real world um, and how you can make non-committed relationships with people and just get them to Skype the class for like half an hour or so. Not even that, just to ask questions and whatnot. So it's not necessarily using resources or, um, you know, not doing an activity as such, but being able to get someone in the real world to speak to the students and maybe they have a better way of communicating with the students. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, Julia wanted to put together this database of scientists that you could contact and Skype through the classroom. And so just say you're teaching, I don't know, uh, physics and you're teaching, I don't know, engineering, like, I don't know, you're teaching engineering. something, engineering, you're teaching biology, you know, marine mm -hmm. science, you could, you could get this marine scientist on Skype, you could book him in on this website and he would come up on Skype and speak to your classroom about that certain topic that you want him to speak to. 